Hi there, it's Guilherme and in this video we're going to overview the target selection system for the Godot turn-based RPG. This is how it looks right now, we start off by playing and then you have to select which action you want to use, in this case I'm going to select the attack and then I am able to select the target that I want to attack. So I'm going to select this porcupine in the middle, press enter and then I can play with the other member of my party, select again the action, select my target, press enter and now they are going to start attacking me. And it is my turn again. What you just saw was the combat arena. I have this scene open here. And as you can see, it's made up of spawn positions, both for the monsters and the player's party. We also have a turn queue, which has already been explained in another video. So if you're interested in that, make sure to watch that. We have our combat interface, which handles the select arrow, which is what we are going to use to select our targets and our old school UI, which is what you see down here in the bottom. A node to build the bars for our players, both the HP and the mana bar. A node responsible again for UI, for displaying the rewards that we get when we finish an encounter. And by the end, we have our grasslands, which is the background and the foreground that we have. I'm gonna open the combat arena script. We're not going to overview all of this code because it covers more than just the part of selecting targets. But the first thing that we have to keep in mind is that we have an initialized function here, which is called from another node and takes a formation and a party. The formation is how our enemies are laid out and what enemies we're going to fight against in this encounter. And the party is the player's party. So we are going to take a look in both the formation and the party right now. And to find it, I'm going to search for formation down here in the file system and open the scene of the porcupine formation. And here, as you can see, we have three positions, which are our porcupines. And we can reuse this scene for several encounters, or if you want to, we can also customize the scene or create other ones by adding more or removing monsters and also changing the layout. So just to show you how this works, I'm going to duplicate this node and I'm going to move it a little bit to the front. So now we're going to have four porcupines and I'm going to play the game again. Now, as you can see, because we change it the way that our formation is, we now have four enemies in this encounter and our selection is still working great. And now, if you remember, besides our enemy formation, we also take as a parameter in the initialize function of our combat arena, the player's party. So I'm going to search again in the file system for the party and I'm going to open the party scene. We have two nodes to the which have a script attached to them that takes which battler we're going to spawn in an encounter. In this case, we have the Godetti, and please don't ask me to pronounce that correctly, and Robbie. And by playing the game and taking a look at its remote tree, you can see how they are being spawned. So I'm gonna go back to Godot, open the remote tree. We're gonna have the combat arena instantiated. And under our turn queue, you can see that we have, again, Godetti, Robbie, and our four battlers that we set in our porcupine formation. We can now go back to our combat arena and open its script. And again, we're not going to overview all of this script. What we are interested in here is the play turn function, which is a function that gets called recursively every time that a turn occurs in our battle. We first get the active battler, in other words, the one that is going to play right now, and we check if it is alive. If it is alive, we select this battler and get an array of targets that we can select to attack. If there are no targets, this means that the battle has ended and we return from the function. If not, what we're going to do is declare two variables, one for the target itself that we're going to attack, and the other one, the action that is going to happen in that target. In the case that this battler is a party member, or if it is a battler that is controlled by the player, we're going to update our interface by showing the actions that we saw before in the old school UI, and we're going to yield on the interface and wait for the action selected signal to be emitted by it. This is going to return to us an action that is going to be applied to our target later on. If this is not a party member, then what we do is we get the first action from this active battler, in this case, the enemy that is currently playing, and we set the action target to be equal to the one that we're going to receive from the choose target function that is being called in our enemy battler. We then wait for this action to be finished and we deselect our battler. And if the battle is still active, we call play turn once again. Now let's go back to our scene and open the select arrow scene. And here you can see that the select arrow is a control node, which has an sprite, in this case the arrow itself, an animation player that is used to animate it, and a twin that we use to cycle through the monsters that we can attack. Now I'm going to open its script. 
The target selected signal is emitted whenever, well, we have selected a target and it is connected to our interface because if you remember correctly from our combat arena, we're actually yielding in our interface and not on our select arrow. We get a reference for both our animation player and our twin and we export a variable that determines how long it should take for the arrow to move from one enemy to the other. Finally, we have an array of targets, which are the ones that we can attack, and the active target, which is the one that we have currently selected. In the ready function, we hide ourselves because we don't want the arrow to show when the battle is still beginning. And right after that, we have the select target function. This function is called from our combat interface, which we're going to see later on, and it takes as an argument, an array of battlers, which are the ones that we can select as of now. We set ourselves to visible, set our targets to be equal to the battlers that we just received, and we set the active one to be the first one in the array. We check to see if the arrow should be pointing to the left or to the right, and we set our position to be equal to the active target, target's global position, which is the position in which the select arrow should be at when we have that battler selected. We start playing our wiggle animation and we grab focus to make sure that our GUI input is going to work. We then yield and wait for the target selected signal to be emitted by ourselves. And whenever this signal gets emitted, we are going to receive a battler, in this case, the one that we selected. And we store this reference in the selected target variable. We once again hide ourselves and we return the selected target. Moving forward, we have the move to function which takes as an argument the battler in which we should move to, and then we configure our twin and start its animation. In the GUI input function, we always return if we are not visible, because in this case, we don't want our select arrow to be moving up and down the screen, even though it's not even visible. And then we start to do some checks in our event. So if we pressed UI accept, this means that we selected a target, and we can emit the signal and pass along with it the active target and we set the input as handled and if not we check if we press the UI cancel in this case we want to cancel our action and go back to the action selection interface and then we emit the same signal but now instead of passing the target active we're actually passing a noob to it if we haven't accepted neither cancel or target selection we get the index in the array of targets of our current active target and depending if we press the down key or the up key, we select the next or the previous target that we can select. And we call move to to make the arrow go towards the target. And again, we set our input as handled. And after selecting the target, this gets passed to our combat interface. So we can go back to our combat arena scene and open the combat interface script. And here you can see that we have the select target function which is the function that is being yielded on, on our combat arena. So here we received our selectable battlers and we passed them to our selected target function in our select arrow. We yield and wait for this function to be completed and then we receive a selected target and this selected target gets passed on to our combat arena which is yielding for this function to be completed. And now our combat arena already has the selected target from the player and it can execute the action that we selected before. Now what we have to do is take a look on how the enemy select its targets. So I'm gonna look for the battler script and open it so we can take a look at it. And if you remember from our combat arena, the function that we were calling was choose target. So I'm gonna go down and click here so we can go to this function and set the script to be full screen. And this is a script that is responsible for the enemies to select a target. We first get a chance between zero and 100 and then we select a random target in our targets array. We check if the chance that we just generated is greater than the default chance that we have to select this random target. And if it is, we return the random target. And if not, we look for the target that has the least amount of health in the targets that we received. And after finding it, we return this target. And that's it. This is all of the systems that we have for both the player to select enemies and the enemies to select which target they are going to attack. You can see that there is room for improvement in the enemy AI. And as always, you're welcome to contribute in the repository. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section and I'll see you in the next one.